Hi everyone, a blessed day to all. Praying that all of you are doing well together with your families and loved ones. May God's guidance be upon us. May He give us wisdom as we begin with our discussion today. So let us now proceed to our topic for this week. Before proceeding to our topic this week, let me first read to you this disclaimer slide. Please note, no copyright infringement is intended and I do not own or claim any images, designs, and any of the original information stated in this video presentation. And this is used for educational purposes only. If any content owners would like to dispute this, I will not hesitate to immediately remove the said content. If you happen to find your art or images in the video, please let me know and I will be glad to credit you. Here is my email address, obri.dirit at cjhc.edu.ph. Now let's talk about the theory of Martha Rogers. Her theory is known as the science of unitary human beings. It views nursing as both a science and as an art that provides a way to view the unitary human being who is integral with the universe. According to her, unitary human being and his or her environment are just one. So the nurses focuses on the people and the manifestations that emerge from the mutual human environmental field processes. So now let us explore more about her theory. According to Martha Rogers, a professional practice in nursing seeks to promote symphonic interaction between man and environment to strengthen the coherence and integrity of the human field and to direct and redirect patterning of the human and environmental fields for realization of maximum health potential. She believes that a patient can never be separated from their environment when you are addressing the health and the treatment. Her knowledge about the coexistence of the human and his or her environment contributed a lot in changing toward better health. Now let's talk about the background of the tourist. Martha Rogers was born on May 12, 1914 in Dallas, Texas. She is an American nurse, a researcher, a theorist, and author widely known for developing the science of unitary human beings. And her landmark book, An Introduction, The Theoretical Basis of Nursing. Martha Elizabeth Rogers is the eldest among four children of Bruce Taylor Rogers and Lucy Moholland Kinner Rogers. Soon after her birth, her family returned to Knoxville, Tennessee, where she began her college education. In 1936, she received her nursing diploma from Knoxville General Hospital School of Nursing. And in 1937, she obtained a Bachelor of Science degree from George Peabody College in Nashville, Tennessee. Her other degrees included a Master's of Arts in Public Health Nursing Supervision from Teachers College, Columbia University, New York in 1945 and a Master's of Public Arts degree in 1952. 
Rogers got her Doctor of Science degree in John Hopkins University, Baltimore in 1954. Rogers' early nursing practice was in rural public health nursing in Michigan and in visiting nurse supervision, education, and practice in Connecticut. Rogers subsequently established the Visiting Nurse Service of Phoenix in Arizona. For 21 years, she was professor and head of the Division of Nursing at University or New York University. After 1975, she continued her duties as professor until she became Professor Emerita in 1979. In 1988, colleagues and students joined her in forming the Society of Rogerian Scholars, or the SRS. She began publishing Rogerian Nursing Science News a member's newsletter to disseminate the theory development and research studies after the formation of the SRS. In 1993, the Journal of Rotarian Nursing Science began publishing journal annually. On March 13, 1994, she finally joined with our creator still holding her title as Professor Emerita. As an author, Rogers' publications include three books and more than 200 articles. She lectured in 46 states, such as the District of Colombia, Puerto Rico, Mexico, the Netherlands, China, Newfoundland, Colombia, Brazil, and other countries. And these are the example of her three published books, which was published in 1961. The title is Educational Revolution in Nursing, and in 1964, Reveal in Nursing, and in 1970, An Introduction to the Theoretical Basis of Nursing. In 1970, Rogers' conceptual model of nursing was based on the set of basic assumptions that describe the life process in human beings that includes wholeness, openness, unidirectionality, pattern, organization, sentience, and thought. There are many categories of theories in nursing, and systems theory is among them which views the person as a whole and not the sum of its parts. So systems theory considers human beings as an open system that they constantly interact with the environment. So like the theory of Callister Roy, Imogen King, Dorothy Johnson, Betty Newman, who developed and supported the views in systems theory and actually, Martha Rogers is one among them. So according to this theory, any change in the pattern and organization of man and his environment is transmitted by waves. This pattern emerges as an observable event in the life of a man. Thus, 
better understanding of human experience should be possible. Rogers postulates that human beings are dynamic energy fields that are integral with environmental field. Both human and environmental fields are identified by pattern and characterized by a universe of open system. In her 1983 paradigm, Rogers postulated four building blocks for her model such as the energy field, a universe of open systems, pattern, and the four-dimensionality. So now let us discuss each of the four building blocks. Let's begin with the energy field. According to Rogers, there are no boundaries that stops the energy field between the human and the environmental fields, which is the openness in her theory. So an energy field constitutes the fundamental unit of both the living and the non-living. According to her, a field is a unifying concept and an energy that signifies the dynamic nature of the field. According to Rogers, energy fields are infinite and pan-dimensional, and she identified two fields under energy fields, and those are the human field and environmental field. Human field is defined as an irreducible, indivisible, pan-dimensional energy field identified by pattern and manifesting characteristics that are specific to the whole and that cannot be predicted from knowledge of the parts. Environmental field is defined as an irreducible, pan-dimensional energy field identified by pattern and integral with the human field. Both fields change continuously, creatively, and integrally. The second building block is a universe of open system. This holds that energy fields are infinite, it is open and integral with one another. The human and the environmental fields are in continuous process and are open systems. They interact together. The third building blocks is pattern. Pattern identifies energy field. It is the distinguishing characteristics of an energy field and is perceived as a single wave. The nature of the pattern changes continuously, innovatively, and these changes give identity to the energy field. Manifestations of pattern have been described as unique and refers to behaviors, qualities, and characteristics of the field. So manifestations emerge as a human environmental mutual process. So, pattern is changing continually and may manifest disease, illness, or well-being. Also, pattern change is continuous, innovative, and relative. The fourth building blocks is pan-dimensionality. She defined it as a nonlinear domain without spatial or temporal attributes. As Phillips in 2010 notes, it is essentially a spaceless and timeless reality. The term pan-dimensional provides 
for an infinite domain without limit. It is best express the idea of a unitary whole. So now let us talk about the meta paradigm of Rogers theory. According to Rogers, nursing is a learned profession. So if you remember in our orientation week, we're in we discuss about a professional nurse. For you to become a professional nurse, you have to study in the higher educational institution. For you to learn the theories, the basic skills, or for you to have your knowledge, the skills, and the attitude to become a professional nurse. Okay. Um, according to Roger, it is also both a science and an art. It is an empirical science, and like other sciences, it lies in the phenomenon that is central to its focus. Rogerian nursing focuses on the concern with people and the world in which they live, which is a natural fit for nursing care as it encompasses people and their environments. The integrality of people and their environments operating from one-dimensional universe of open systems that points to a new paradigm and initiates the identity of nursing as a science. The purpose of nursing, according to her, is to promote health and well-being for all persons. And the art of nursing is creative use of science of nursing for human betterment. And when you say science of nursing, of course, uh, it undergo a scientific method and evidence-based study. According to Rogers, professional practice in nursing seeks to promote symphonic interaction between human and environmental fields to strengthen the integrity of the human field and to direct and redirect patterning of the human and environmental fields for realization of maximum health potential. Rogers defines a person as an open system in continuous process with the open system that is the environment. She defines unitary human being as an irreducible, indivisible, one-dimensional energy field identified by pattern and manifesting characteristics that are specific to the whole. Human beings, according to her, are not disembodied entities, nor they are mechanical aggregates. And according to her, man is a unified whole possessing his own integrity and manifesting characteristics that are more than and different from the sum of its parts. As such, body exists merely as an expression of the underlying energy pattern within an energy field. According to Rogers, health and illness are manifestations of pattern and are considered to denote behaviors that are of high value and low value. So Rogers uses the term health in many of her earlier writings without clearly defining the term. She uses the term passive health to symbolize wellness and the absence of disease and major illness. Her promotion of positive health connotes direction in helping people with opportunities for rhythmic consistency. Later, she wrote that wellness is much better term because the term health is very ambiguous.
he viewed environment as an irreducible, one-dimensional energy field identified by pattern and manifesting characteristic different from those of the parts. Environmental fields are infinite and change is continuously innovative and predictable and characterized by increasing diversity. In 1970, Rogers identified the following five assumptions that are also theoretical assertions supporting her model derived from literature on human beings, physics, mathematics, and behavioral science. The first one is man is a unified whole, possessing his own integrity and manifesting characteristics more than and different from the sum of his parts. This means that each of us, each individual, is unique and has own moral values, beliefs, and principles. Therefore, as a nurse, when you're going to give or when you are planning your care for your patient, it should be holistic and individualized. The second one is one and environment are continuously exchanging matter and energy with one another. So this means that we continuously interact with our environment and this environment could be our um, family, friends, or relatives. Okay, And then the third one is the life process evolves irreversibly and unidirectionally along the space-time continuum. So this means that each individual will go through life process. This is same with the stages of development wherein we go through uh, or we started as infant, as child, an adult. Diba? We cannot go back to uh, being a child if you are already an adult or if you have a problem or a sickness you cannot go back to the previous state wherein hindi mo pa na encounter yung problem or yung a sickness all you have to do is to change the pattern para magkaroon ng solution yung um, problem or illness na yun. The fourth assumption is pattern and organization identify man and reflect his innovative wholeness. An example of pattern could be the patient daily routine. So, kung before, um, the patient is able to eat by himself or herself and able to go to the bathroom to take a bath. But when circumstances or in the presence of illness, changes happen to the usual pattern of the patient. Maybe this time, um, di niya na kayang kumain mag -isa. Or she or he might need an assistance from the nurse. This is where the patient starts to reflect of his innovative wholeness. Ano ba kaya ang pwede niyang gawin no, na para magawa niya ng paraan para maibalik yung kanyang dating routine. The fifth one is man is characterized by the capacity for abstraction and imagery, language and thought, sensation and emotion. So, because man is a sentient being, a thinking being, According to Rogers, the life process is homeodynamic. This principle postulates the way the life process is and predicts the nature of its evolving. This thought describes the relationship between humans and the environment. This principle of homeodynamic, the nature, the process, and the context of change, support and exemplify the assertion that the universe is energy that is always becoming more diverse through changing continuous wave frequencies. 
Rogers identified the principles of change as helicity, resonancy, and integrality. Helicity was described as spiral development in continuous, non-repeating, and innovative patterning. She further described the nature of change which evolved from probabilistic to unpredictable while remaining continuous and innovative. The second principle is resonancy, which refers to patterning changes with a development from lower to higher frequency, that is, with varying degrees of intensity. It embeds wave frequency and energy field pattern evolution. The third principle is integrality, which reflects the unity of wholeness of humans and their environment. Now we'll talk about the application of Roger's theory into the current nursing practice for us to better understand her theory. So we have here the journal entitled Application of Roger's System Model in Nursing Care of a Client with Cerebrovascular Accident, which was written by Priya Reshma Aranha in 2018, published in Manipal Journal of Nursing and Health Sciences. So the application of theory was about Mrs. Keta, who is a 70 years old female, was diagnosed with septicemia, and she was admitted to the intensive care unit of the hospital. She was known to have hypertension and diabetes mellitus in the past seven years. A year ago, she had right-sided hemiplegia because of stroke. She cannot express herself verbally when she is in the ICU. She was fed through nasogastric tube. Foley catheters drained her urine and her bowel pattern is regular. A decubitus ulcer was present in the sacral region. Her movements were restricted on the right side of her body. After regaining her consciousness and her condition stable, she was transferred to the medical ward. Now, she is more relaxed and comfortable in the medical ward. Mrs. Geta was able to tolerate the fluids in her body orally. After three weeks at the hospital, she was discharged. On her discharge, her catheter was removed and she was able to tolerate a soft diet. Her family members were taught about taking care of her. Social workers were also consulted to aid her. With the help of the social workers, Mrs. Keta was able to sit with the support of the bed and move her lips. Although she can do those things, she still needs someone who can accompany her to the activities of daily living. Now you can see the pattern. There are no changes. Her pattern in the hospital had changed because of the decision of her family and healthcare professionals. During her days in the hospital, the primary concern of the staff was to help her achieve good health. When the time came that she was discharged, family support and rehabilitation were provided to have a better life. Mrs. Geta uses all of the resources from her family, society, and the hospital to have a better future. The nursing care was provided to Mrs. Geta 
using the nursing process. Now, let's see the nursing assessment based on Roger's system model. Um, may I remind you again that the nursing process is actually a series of steps that includes your five major steps. The assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, and evaluation. Okay, the focus of the next slide is about the nursing assessment. So now, this is an example of nursing assessment data before pattern. Mrs. Geta is a right-sided hemiplegic. She said, I cannot do anything of my own. I am dependent on others for everything. She tolerates only fluid and soft diet and her intake is reduced. She has a deep bed sore over sacral region. Her pattern is decided by others in the hospital. She said, I am not able to mix up with others due to my condition. I feel lonely. Mrs. Kinta's son stated she is very religious and bold enough to face the problems of life, but now she has lost the confidence. She feels lonely and isolated. Mrs. Keta strives hard to achieve the fullest health within her limits. So you can see that there is already a changes in the activity of the daily living which again an example of your pattern so under resonancy we have also here an example mrs keta is on treatment she complies with it she states if i do not take this medicines my condition may deteriorate further she further states my illness had laid burden on my son, but her son is very supportive. It is observed that sometimes she is pleasant, sometimes dull and withdrawn. When she was dull, she said, I feel depressed and guilty of my illness. I do not know what will happen in the future. Okay, so under helicity. Mrs. Keta's present condition, she is unidirectional in moving towards achieving health within her limits. She said, I accept my illness. I may be recovering by using all the resources available. I do not fear death. Her son stated, we will support and care for our mother throughout her remaining life. So this is being positive, no? So now an example of your assessment data under integrality. As Mrs. Keta is hemiplegic and ready for discharge, her family has to do some modifications at home. She has to get treatment for her hypertension and diabetes mellitus also. Her son stated, I do not know how to take care of her at home and prevent any forthcoming problems. All right, so that ends our presentation about the theory of Martha Rogers. So I hope you learned something about her theory and you know, you understand it and you know how to apply it later in your future nursing practice. Okay, so before proceeding to the remaining three slides, let me read to you. This quote by Esther, chapter 4, verse 14. Perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created to become God's angel. So here's the references of my presentation. Thank you, everyone. God bless.